in some provinces, kids are already back in school. If schools are to reopen when it is safe to do so, an individualized plan needs to be made for children, youth, and families who are dealing with diabetes during the pandemic to ensure that everyone is safe. Now, going back to school is not only about academic achievement, but it could have emotional well-being benefits to young people, but it will also allow families to rebalance their responsibilities that have really increased recently, especially with taking the responsibility for things like distance learning. It's important to keep in mind also that children with diabetes are not at higher risk of acquiring COVID, but going back to school will involve using the measures that are necessary to flatten the curve. And these will include things like physical distancing, avoidance of large gatherings, hand washing, covering cuffs and sneezes, and cleaning surfaces. If a child or youth with diabetes is not feeling well, then they need to stay at home and not go to school. They also will need to follow their sick day management to plan. Please speak with your schools and with your diabetes team to get more information about the safe return to schools. When we try and understand what risk factors increase the probability of having a poor outcome with COVID-19, we use what are called observational studies. We observe which people have a poor outcome and don't, and then observe their characteristics and see if there are any that stand out. One thing that's really important to note about these studies is that they can show an association but they don't necessarily show that it caused the outcome. Let me give you an example. I could prove to you that carrying matches causes lung cancer. If we took a bunch of people who had lung cancer and didn't and found how many carried matches in their pocket, the ones who developed lung cancer would be much higher risk of carrying matches. Does that mean that sulfur from the matches somehow got into their bloodstream and caused the cancer? No, of course not. The real causing factor in that case is smoking, and people who smoke are more likely to both carry matches and have lung cancer. That's an obvious one, but sometimes it's not so obvious whether a factor causes the outcome that we're interested in because we're just observing what happened in the natural world, not running an experiment where we can control everything except that one factor. Another thing that's important to understand when we ask questions about what increases the risk of COVID-19 and deaths from COVID-19 is that the data aren't very mature, which is really disappointing. You think there are like more than 3 million people have gotten this infection. Surely, surely we have some information about what increases the risk. The early published studies are out of China, which are helpful and, and well done studies, but because the epidemiology of chronic disease may be somewhat different in that population, we're not sure exactly how they apply. They showed that both high blood pressure and diabetes were risk factors. In terms of diabetes, they did not distinguish between type 1 and type 2. They did not comment on the A1C, nor did they comment on whether or not obesity was present. So we know that in type 2 diabetes, a high proportion also live with obesity. So was it the obesity causing the poor outcome or was it the diabetes? That can't be understood from these studies. Another factor that's important in appreciating why we don't have better information is that at the beginning of an epidemic, the important thing is to treat the people who are sick and get a map of how the disease is spreading so that we can stop transmission. And so that the data that are collected are really, is it a case, yes or no, and where are they, and who were they exposed to? It's not interesting to the people who are doing that work to understand much more subtle questions like past history of cancer or on immunosuppressive drugs, even though clinically those are the questions that might be more, much more of interest to us. And so as an example of what the, re the reason the data were collected for and how that impacts what you can learn from the study would be a very early report from the Center for Disease Control in the U.S. Um, showed 4,000 positive tests 
And in 2000, they didn't even know the age of the person who had the disease. And so if the data are that minimal, it's going to be really hard to make any head nor tail of them. While there's a bit more information being produced on the Canadian uh, data sources, really, I think, again, they reflect the purpose for which the data were collected and don't necessarily tell the whole story. So, for instance, on the Canadian website, the rate of diabetes among people affected by the disease is 10%. But we know the rate of diabetes is 10% in the entire population, so I guess that means diabetes doesn't have any impact. And in fact, we know that people who have COVID-19 are generally older. And people who are older have a rate of diabetes in Canada that's much higher than 10%. So we could conclude that diabetes protects you. No, don't do that. Just say, gee, these data were collected for a different purpose. They're not really going to answer that question. We have obtained a... Um, preview copy of a study, a large, well-done study from the United Kingdom. It hasn't been published yet, so we need to reserve full confidence in the data until it's undergone peer review and been accepted for publication, but it, it does shed some interesting light. In this study, they used research-ready electronic medical records. So the long history of people, we can know what diseases they had in the past, whether or not they have high blood pressure, what their A1C is. All those data are collected in an anonymized environment. So the researchers don't know who it is, but they can link all these pieces of data about the patients. And they've um, developed this report that has found some interesting factors that are associated with, but maybe not causing, uh, death from COVID-19. Uh, first, which was somewhat surprising, although also confirmed in the Chinese data, was that male sex was a higher risk factor. So men were about twice as likely to die than women from COVID in this study. Increasing age was definitely a risk factor, again, concordant with other studies. Being between 60 and 70 doubled your risk of dying. Between 70 and 80, it was almost five times higher. And over the age of 80, your risk of dying was nearly 13 times higher. So clearly sex and age are not factors that we can change and yet they can have a big impact on the disease. The study also found that having diabetes with an A1C over seven and a half increased the risk, just over double the risk. But again, unfortunately, no information about type one and type two and no information um, these, this study isn't really able to answer the question about, well, is it really the diabetes or all the other things that we know travel with diabetes? Because this study also found that obesity was a risk factor, that being from low socioeconomic status was a risk factor, and that being South Asian or black was a risk factor. And so since all of those tend to travel together, at least in a Canadian population, really going to be hard to sort out which is which. I think that people who are, carry those risks do need to be especially careful and all of us need to be careful to protect them. We need to be washing our hands properly. We need to be socially distancing in accordance with public health recommendations and we need to be staying home when sick. We will continue to monitor the data and keep you updated as we get more information about the risk factors associated both with getting COVID-19 and with having poor outcomes from it. Thank you very much for your excellent question. I am sure that there are many others in the country who are asking something similar. To address this, I think it is very important to remember that those who live with diabetes do not appear to be at higher risk of developing COVID-19 infection. However, the severity of infection may be higher. Diabetes is listed as one of the potential risk factors, but other ones that are also important are age, being male, obesity, and high blood pressure, as well as cardiovascular disease. What we do not yet know is whether the type of diabetes makes a difference. However, what we do know is that the people who have more of those risk factors that I mentioned are the ones who are at highest risk of more severe disease. 
As for your question around employment and risk about bringing things home, I think it is very reasonable for you to speak to your employer to see if any accommodations can be made at work in order to reduce your exposure. On the Diabetes Canada website, there is a sample employer letter that you could download which may help with your discussion. If, however, accommodations cannot be made because it cannot always be done so depending on your work environment, you should always still protect yourself. And the way to do that would be to maintain social distancing as much as possible, to wear a face covering in order to protect others as well as yourself, and of course, washing your hands like there's no tomorrow. As well, upon arriving home, you can protect your household by doing certain things. For example, upon arriving home, you want to change out of the clothing that you were wearing outside. You'll want to leave the shoes that you wear outside, perhaps outside on the porch or in the garage or somewhere in a special place, and certainly not walking around the house with the same shoes. You want to take a shower, wash your hair, wash your face, wash your hands, of course, immediately upon arrival home. Those simple measures will also be able to protect the people that are at home with you. Finally, I'd like to say that everyone is concerned at this point, and that is completely understandable. Eventually, the world will have to open up in some form or shape that will likely look quite different than before, but returning to our jobs is something that we are all going to have to do. The issue is going to be doing it safely and ensuring that we protect ourselves and our loved ones as much as possible. So let's control what we can control and do what we can to protect ourselves.